So I'm going to talk about uh, the politics of people, animals, and the environment. So last June, uh, Jordan, who was our West Coast campaigner, and I attended a conference about farm animal transport in the Netherlands, and it was held by a group called Animal Politics Foundation. It is a foundation that was set up by a political party in the Netherlands called Party for the Animals. And both the party and the foundation, interestingly, are dedicated to enshrining rights of animals into the democratic process worldwide. It's a pretty lofty goal, in my opinion. Um, the Party for the Animals describes itself as the first political party in the world that does not put short-term interests of man in the pivotal position, but the entire planet and all her inhabitants instead. So clearly, this would be perceived as a party that was radical. Some may even say extreme. So the question is, how successful has it been? Well, in November 2006, the Party for the Animals elected two people out of 150 seats in the Dutch lower house. That's like our parliament. In 2015, the party elected a total of 50 representatives, two in the lower house, two in the upper house, one in the European Parliament, 18 representatives in 10 provincial states, 12 representatives in 12 cities, and 15 representatives in eight Dutch water councils. Uh, that is from top to bottom, they have elected officials. And then in 2017, they won an additional three seats in the, in, in the lower house, with, so that made up a total of five. Both Jordan and I left that conference inspired. We met animal rights people who understood the critical role that politics plays in pr protecting uh, life on Earth. We met 22, we met people from 22 countries, people who were actively engaged in politics, uh, many of whom had established animal rights political parties, um, some of whom were actually elected in vari at various levels of government. And so real political change was beginning to take hold in the Netherlands. It was really inspiring. It was actually amazing. So the question is, how do we in Canada build on what we learned in the Netherlands, but within the Canadian context? Because, of course, we have constraints under the first-past-the-post voting system. It's a much regressive kind of vo uh, voting process. And, but, but there's desire, real desire, I think, for political change that we're seeing expressed in places like the Democratic nomination with Bernie Saunders, with the election of the 28-year-old Democrat who, was def who defeated a 10-term Republican incumbent in New York. There are many, many examples of people who are inspired to have change. So how do we, who want to protect animals and the environment, tap into desire for real change in our country? In the past and present, we have been forced to go hat in hand, begging politicians, and governments, and their bureaucracies to end animal cruelty and change the laws and end the suffering. Often we've been dismissed, and uh, even when we have evidence on our side. But despite all the hurdles, we've actually had victories. We've won protection for animals. Animal Alliance and the Animal Protection Party has had some stunning successes, as has many organizations and individuals in this room who are working on similar issues. I'll just give you a list, quick list of five that are sort of a national example. We won a Canada-wide ban on the transport of compromised animals to slaughter. That remains in place today. We ended an Ontario Parks cormorant cull. We forced the University of Guelph to end the practice of live terminal surgeries, killing cats and dogs after they'd been spayed and neutered by veterinary students. We stopped a number of deer culls in BC and Ontario, and we successfully intervened in the Supreme Court with Zuchek and lawyers Leslie Bisgould and Clay Ruby to prevent the patenting of life form, namely the Oncomouse. So these victories are possible, and our victories are probable and even likely, and we should continue to fight those fights. They're very, very important. But I think we just need to recognize that the fight for fundamental change in our society requires us to be more politically engaged. We hear about the failure of young people to vote, and we worry about low voter turnout, and we, and I, and I don't blame anybody for this, have become extremely cynical about politics and politicians. When you watch Donald Trump and Doug Ford, there's a, every reason to be cynical. 
but I think we need to overcome our cynicism in order to make lasting change for animals and for all life forms on Earth through political discourse. Animal Alliance has always been a nonprofit advocacy group because of the extent of our political and electoral work. Ten years after the organization was founded, we conducted a 10-year review and concluded that despite amazing victories and animals saved, we needed to step up our game. We, what we had to achieve so far was good, but not good enough. So we formed an entity called Environment Voters. This is back in the time when it was much harder to form a political party. And it operated between 1999 and 2006 and participated in third party activity in federal, provincial, and municipal elections all across the country. And I'll just use one example. We entered a fight in the city of Winnipeg who had a contract with the University of Manitoba to sell all their dogs to research. Um, and we attempted to meet with the mayor and city council and others and they refused to change that legislation. So ultimately after a, a year and a half fight, we entered the municipal politics. Glenn Murray was the mayor at the time. Glenn Murray used to be a cabinet minister under Wynne government. Um, and so we entered into the game. We uh, supported candidates and went out and canvassed, put out literature for the candidates who wanted the practice to end. We ran radio ads against the mayor. If mayor Glenn Murray can't even run a dog pound, what makes you think he can run a city? Three weeks after the election ended, the mayor and council were so inundated with opposition from residents that they canceled the contract at the university. And that stands today. So we know electoral processes and electoral politics can work for real change for animals and the environment. But despite our involvement as a third party, we were, had serious constraints under the election laws. In many places, they were narrowing down what third parties could do. And then amazingly, in 2003, the federal political landscape changed thanks, interestingly, to the Communist Party of Canada. The party, and it's the second oldest party in Canada next to the Liberals, very interesting party, um, waged a 13-year uh, legal battle with the federal government for its survival. It had been deregistered for failing to run the required 50 candidates um, in the election. However, up it to, took the thing to the Supreme Court, and in Figueroa versus uh, Canada, the court struck down the 50% minimum as being unconstitutional and the federal government was forced to amend the Canada Elections Act and allow political parties to become registered, provided, after a number of other uh, requirements, provided they run one candidate. So all of a sudden, this world of politics was opened up to people who wanted to do this kind of work. And then thanks to Stephen Best, who's our advisor and chief agent, he suggested that we consider forming the first ever animal protection party in Canada. He suggested that we reach out to our supporters to determine whether there was any interest in it. And in fact, our supporters embraced the idea. And so the Animal Protection Party of Canada was born and formally registered in December 2005. And so now we were able to fully participate in federal election campaigns. We then developed a platform, a number of strategies to build our campaigns on, and I just thought I'd go over a few of those strategies just to give you an idea. The idea is in campaigns of any sort, electoral or otherwise, because of the magnitude of the issues that we deal with, the large numbers, you know, three quarters of a billion animals we eat every year, not us, <laughs> others. Um, 3.6 million research animals is just too hard for people to get their head around. What does that mean? What are what animals are we talking about? Uh, killing 50 cormorants a day, that sort of thing. So the idea is to identify an animal and make that animal kind of the ambassador for the issue. And the same for uh, habitat. We need to identify key habitats and make them um, uh, and make them sort of the highlight the need for broad protections because it's hard to comprehend the extent of industrial exploitation of land and resources in Canada. We need to really research uh, each issue. Our research is evidence-based. It's important to never believe the animal exploiters or never believe the government agencies that defend those uh, animal ex and environmental exploiters. And we need to examine and critique information and challenge claims like deer are destroying the environment, cormorants are causing ecological damage. We need to figure out how to deal with those kinds of issues. 
we need to develop a coherent strategy we need to never give up there are lots of issues that are easy to win but most of the issues are not and we need to always be there to say it's we are never going to give up and that makes us really um, a, a very strong formidable force against uh, the interests that are not ours and then we need to engage in politics uh, between and during elections and like it or not ultimately it's ultimately necessary uh, because it's the only way to affect long-term change for animals and the environment politicians are the gatekeepers of the legislation they decide what animals live and die what level of cruelty and suffering is acceptable what exploitation is necessary for human entertainment and progress with over 50 elected representatives at all levels of government the party for the animals in the Netherlands provides a constant pressure to move forward on the agenda to protect animals not backward so how do we start how do we begin to achieve the, what the party for the animals has, be, has been able to achieve. We have a much more challenging job because we have a first-past-the-post system. So we just need to figure out how to affect change. So we need to acknowledge and embrace electoral politics and understand the importance of our participation in it. And we need to develop election campaign expertise at all levels of government. We need political researchers and strategists, those who are exist in major political parties who will lay out a strategic plan for electoral involvement and ways to change political composition so that governments become more responsive to us and to our interests in terms of animal protection and the environment. We're suggesting for those people who don't want to be candidates and if anybody's decided after this talk that they'd love to be a candidate come on up and see me afterwards uh, for those who don't want to we're looking for people to run what we call riding watch and those are participants in their own writings and what we're looking for are people who will do who will be responsible responsible for researching the riding who the candidates are what's the voting history um, and for people to keep tabs during the election on the candidates on public events on all candidates meetings and to have animal protection people there at every single all candidates meeting asking every single candidate what are you going to do to protect animals in the environment and can you imagine if at every all candidates meeting in 338 ridings across this country that happened that would be a national discussion we would have some degree of control over the debate and I think we would see some interesting change that might come out of that. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all kinds of social um, avenues that we've never had before that we can actually build a national commentary if people decided that they wanted to take this on. We need to fight the first, pa first pass, the post system, obviously, but that's a long-term uh, goal. Um, we need to campaign for minority governments because under the first past the post system they work better for us if they have to co if everybody has to talk to each other to get a piece of law passed it tends to be a better piece of law the idea is to demonstrate at the end of the day that political parties to political parties that there are consequences for positions taken on animal protection and environmental issues and those consequences can be positive and they can be negative so without serious political involvement, we will continue to see the demise of such bills as 246 and S214. We will see amendments to animal transport regulations continually undermined and weakened. We will continue to fail to meet our climate change targets. We will continue to um, deny the main causes of a climate change such as intensive animal agriculture we will continue to be a throwaway society whose economy is built on ever increasing consumption clearly not sustainable we will continue to go hat in hand and beg for change and we will face a dismissive and arrogant Trudeau who could not even pass the most minimal changes to the criminal code section um, and we will face a forward government who seems intent on encroaching on protected areas and uh, facilitating the destruction of double crested cormorants we have a real opportunity to acquire power the animal protection party has been in existence since 2006 and is the only animal rights party in Canada we have an incredible opportunity at the time when voters are deciding who they're going to vote for and how they're going to vote 
and we're at, at a time when candidates are asking for their job back. This is more time when people are listening to what we have to say. We can run candidates, spend money, on, um, run national ads. We have all sorts of potential to begin to change the dialogue um, in, in politics in Canada. I think we should stop begging, and I think we should become political. We should acquire sufficient political power and demand real legislative change that will protect animals and the environment in the long term. Thank you.